All right, so step one to the two column proof is always what? Given. Given. I grab one of the givens, okay, and I go with it. X is the midpoint of a y. Okay. Given. All right. Now that's going to tell me something, and from what it tells me, I can go with that. So, x, right here, this is the midpoint to a y. What does that mean? It's in the middle of it. It's in the middle of it. Can I extrapolate kind of in some information about being in the middle? What? Yeah, like some information, like, like, Skylar, get in the middle of me and, uh, well, Jock Quinn right here, right? Stand right in the middle between me and Jock Quinn. And the, so, he's in between me and Jock Quinn, right? But, I want you to be in the middle, the exact middle, what does that mean? To be in the middle of me and Joaquin. Right? Come this way. Set <laughs> up, up, up. Is that about middle? You got more room over there. I got more room? Yeah. It's too close. Too close? I think he's too close to me. <laughs> well, so what does it mean? What's the distance from me to him? What's the distance from you to him? Are they going to be equal or are they going to be different? They're equal. Is that what middle means? Is that what midpoint means? Is that if he's the midpoint between me and Joaquin, then the distance from me to Skylar is the same as the distance from Joaquin to Skylar? Yeah. Does that make sense? Okay. So if this is Skylar and this is Joaquin and this is me, then these distances should be the same, right? If he was in the midpoint. Does that make sense? Okay. That's what you're trying to do. And when you extrapolate some information, right, you write it down. So what are we saying? We're saying that AX, right, is congruent to, to XY. To XY. Why? Because it's the midpoint. It's beautiful. And whenever we say the word because, we use the word definition. Okay? Alright? So anytime you're like, because it's the midpoint. Because Dan said so. <laughs> because it's uh, uh, some other rule. They're parallel. It's perpendicular. It's supplementary. It's complementary. Because of anything like that. All right, we're going to use definition, okay? Because it's a midpoint, definition of a midpoint. Set. Okay? All right. Can we extrapolate any other information from that? Alright, then if we ain't got nothing else, let's go to something that's given to us. Are they giving us anything else? Y is the midpoint of X and B. Okay, so Y is the midpoint of XB. What does that tell us? That X, Y, and YB are the same thing. So then this, notice how I'm going to put that right next to it, right? And this are the same? Yeah. Does that make sense? That they're congruent? Just like we did here, right? 
Okay, but before, oh, oh, what, where did I get this? So I'm all tripping. I, I'm, I'm moving on before I... It's given. It's okay. given. Okay, it's given. All right. And then my next step, i got to get a different color, right? My next step was to extrapolate this, right? XY is congruent to YB. So XY is congruent to YB. And again, definition of a midpoint. Okay. So far, so good. But this is where we want to be. We want to be at x y x a x is is congruent to y b. Now I have a x is x y, and I have x y is y b. But I want x y a x is y b. How is there a rule that lets me get rid of these two and just set these equal to each other? What's the rule? And this should be in our notes, right? This is the one that needs to be in our notes, the big time rule. Okay? If A equals B and B equals C, then a equals C, right? Transitive property, right? And that lets us get rid of the B's and lets the A's equal the C, right? Yeah. Is that what we're doing here? Yeah. If A is B and B is C, then what? Then A equals C. Then A equals C, right? And what did we call that rule? The transitive property. Transitive. Okay. Cool. Then that's what we do. <laughs> right? Yeah, we did, bro. All right. Drop the mic. Yeah.